When is the model steam engine not worth rebuilding? This is part 9. A Stuart Sun steam engine is a smaller version of the Sirius engine. This one was not in a very good state of repair, with a broken base and a homemade displacement lubricator. I gave it a bit of thought and rebuilt it anyway. The deciding factor was the mechanical condition of the engine. A Stuartson steam engine is quite an unusual engine, very different from the rest of the range. This Sun engine sits right in the middle of the range. It has an enclosed crankshaft that can be filled with oil. It has a piston valve at the top and single acting cylinders. This of course means they're not self-starting. They're very powerful engines and used to be used for model hydroplane racing. Over the years I've had a few of these Sun engines and they run very well. But what I have seen on a few of them are broken mounting lugs. This is because the mounting lugs are integral with the engine's base plate, which in turn is made from cast iron. As a material, cast iron works very well in compression, but not very well at all in tension. And if the engine is unevenly bolted down to either a bed plate or directly into the bolt, then the mounting lugs can easily fracture, as can be seen here. Someone's had a half-hearted attempt at repairing the engine, and it's not very good, is it really? Two very rough looking pieces of brass crudely screwed to the underside of the engine's bed plate is not my idea of a repair, so I intend to make a new bed plate. First of all though, I'm going to run the engine. And here it is running on very little compressed air, there's nothing registering on the gauge, and it runs very well indeed. And look what happens when I increase the pressure slightly. The slide valve events are controlled by a shaft that runs down the engine and is geared to the crankshaft at 90 degrees. It's a very simple and very reliable design, not a lot to go wrong. The only problem of course being single acting cylinders. If you have it in a boat and the boat stops in the middle of the lake then your boat's probably going to emulate a Viking funeral as the engine is not self-starting. Back now to the repair, this is a piece of 316 smile steel. Here it is cleaned up with the engine sat on it. What I'm going to do is make an entirely new bed plate. What I often find is the original builder was not the person who finished the engine and he certainly wasn't the person who repaired it. I'm going to show how I make the base. The first thing I do is get a piece of mild steel and spray it satin black. I should really use engineer's blue which is what you use for marking out pieces of metal. The general idea is spray some paint or engineer's blue onto the piece of metal and then when you draw around the component that you're wishing to copy you can see the scribe line clearly. What I'm needing to do here is draw around the existing component and mark all the positions of the holes at the same time. And without the engineer's blue or in my case satin black paint a silver line on a silver piece of metal will be very difficult to see. I only want to do this once. So here you see me drawing around the component. So after marking all the positions of the bolt holes, it's over now to the drilling machine to drill the holes. I'm using a centre drill, and from experience I can actually see a spot on a piece of metal and put the centre drill where I need it to be. If you're unsure about drilling the holes this way, a better method is possibly to use a magnifying glass and use a centre punch and punch the holes manually before putting the drill near them. As you see on the metal plate as I'm drilling it, I have not yet marked out the position of the other two lugs. So all I did was turn over the component, which gave me an extra two lugs to play with, and I drew round those and marked out the centres of the holes. This in reality was not a brilliant idea, because to my surprise, the original positions of these lugs were not 100% accurate. I should have done it a little bit more carefully if I'm perfectly honest. But by doing a bit of careful reprofiling of the part, it worked out fine in the end. This clip shows me removing the cylinder cladding. I've been very careful with the screws because I don't want to drop them on the floor and I put them in a safe place so that when I put the engine back together, I know where they are. This piece of aluminium is probably not the original part for the engine. It does the trick, but it's not profiled very neatly. So what I'm going to do is use my little drum sander in my Minicraft drill to trim the part so that it fits a little better. If you find yourself having to do a job like this, and you've not done this kind of a thing before, always remove very little metal, and then check the fit of the modified part. 
This engine was originally green, Stuart green. So I think I'm going to do it Stuart green again. So it's into a bath of cellulose thinners to remove the paint. This cellulose thinners quickly removes the paint and then it's ready for painting and finishing. And that is it for this first episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.